I suspect that some of the uh, people that we have in attendance here are, uh, might be interested in EVs, electric vehicles. And you might know a guy named Chris Lennon because he's kind of been around as an engineer uh, and uh, someone active in standards work for quite some time. And uh, so I thought you might want to see something that, that uh, a little project that Chris worked through. Hey everybody, it's Chris Lennon here. A lot of you know that I've got this other life that involves uh, driving cars really, really fast. I've done uh, race car driving for about 20 years now. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how do you take a fast race car and make it even quicker using some technology you might not really think uh, is, uh, is the way to do it. Um, so uh, let's kind of talk about that. The, the car we're talking about is in a lot of the pictures you'll see uh, behind me here. Um, so these are pictures of the, uh, the car throughout the years. And uh, you'll see it's had a lot of different uh, looks, but it generally looks like an old Porsche. Looks can be deceiving, however. Uh, so we ran uh, with this car for many years on uh, many different race circuits, uh, including uh, the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, but others as well, um, as a traditional race car with an internal combustion motor. However, we decided to change that up a couple of years ago. And in order to go faster, we took a kind of an innovative approach. And I'm going to walk you over here to uh, where the car actually is and show you what we did. So uh, as a lot of you know, and it's probably best to go back here and show you the whole car. So, you know, old looking 911, right? Looks kind of like a race car. But if you look in the back here, it's a little bit different. Where the engine normally is in the 911, we have motors instead, and those look a little bit different, don't they? What they are, are electric motors, and there are actually eight of them in the car. You can see the rearmost four there, and there's another four right in front of those. These are actually motors uh, from uh, Zero Motorcycles, uh, and uh, a bunch of their really smart guys um, got in touch with me a few years ago and said, if you want to make the car a lot faster, here's a way to do it. Um, let's electrify it and let's put a bunch of our electric motorcycle motors in the back of the car. And so here's what we've ended up with. So uh, that's the, the business end of it. But if you want to see kind of how all this works, there's a ton of wiring, which if we get down in here, you'll see... Uh, a whole bunch of wiring here, a whole bunch of orange uh, cabling. Um, a lot of copper, a lot of weight in copper in the car. So I'll give you another look here of um, the mess that's in there at the moment. Um, what you're looking at is wiring going back to what are called controllers, which are uh, more or less uh, power inverters. Um, we have batteries that are direct current, and these um, motors in the back are alternating current. So you need to switch from DC to AC. And in order to do that, you've got these inverters, controllers, uh, whatever you want to call them. And you might wonder, where are the batteries in the car? And how many batteries does it require? Well, if we look in the front of the car here, you'll see that there are a bunch of batteries. There's two of them in the front here. You see the really thick cabling that uh, takes the power back from those. And then in the passenger compartment, where you might have a passenger normally, we've got two more batteries. So those are four, what they call them are battery monoliths. And um, they put out, uh, people say, well, it must be a high voltage system. It isn't, it's 110 volts, but you would, you'd be surprised at how many amps this is. It's 4,000 amps. So it's a ton of amperage going from four batteries back to eight motors in the back of the car. And the result is a really fast race car and a, uh, a car that looks old on the outside. The body is about 50 years old, believe it or not. It's actually a little bit more than that. 
but everything inside it, as you can see, is very young. It's a, a year or two old. So um, hope that uh, gives you just a quick look at a different perspective on electric vehicles. And uh, we kind of think this is the future of hot rodding. Uh, that, uh, that a lot of people will be going in this direction in the future. And uh, we're kind of pioneers in it and kind of proud of it. So hope you enjoyed it and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. So there you go. And uh, quick calculation says that uh, 440 kilowatts uh, running those engines. How fast, Gene asks. Uh, I think 95 miles an hour, something like that. As far as Chris goes, uh, yeah, it's, Chris has got kind of an alternate life, which you can tell is kind of one of the things we focused on as the themes for these little interstitial videos. But anyway, um, Chris has actually written a book about uh, Pikes Peak Hill Climb and his experience. You can look for it on Amazon or your bookseller. Pikes Peak Road Race is the oldest road race in North America. And it's a race that starts, uh, I forget, maybe 8,000 feet and ends up at 14,000 feet elevation. And, oh, hi, Chris. I see you're, uh, you're actually here. You made it. There you're he bad. is. Hi, I didn't know you were there. I'm sorry. Uh, that's great. That's great. First of all, thank you a lot for for putting that video together. And uh, second of all, it, it, it's great to see you. Uh, it's, it's been a while. I'm hoping at some point we can, uh, we can m m see each other again in person. So, so anyway, you want to uh, just uh, quickly tell people uh, a little bit about the history of Pikes Peak. They might, uh, we've got people from all over the place here. And sure. the other thing I was going to do, I don't know if you've got a, a pointer you can put to in a chat, but I know you've done some multicam videos with the instrumentation to show people what the run is like but uh maybe just briefly about the history of it and how long it takes to run up the mountain and the starting and ending altitude something like that yeah so pikes peak is as uh people in america know it's referred to as america's mountain i don't know why that's america's mountain there's a lot of mountains but um marketing i guess but uh it's a uh, it's a 14,115 foot tall mountain, one of 52 14ers in Colorado. Um, and yeah, as you said, Brad, it, uh, start line is actually about uh, 9,300 feet, as I recall. So it's about a 5,000 foot climb with 156 turns in that uh, span of time. And it's about uh, just under 12 and a half miles uh, to get from the bottom to the top. Um, and the, uh, once a year, uh, we have the, it's the second oldest motor race in North America. Oh, second after, oldest, okay. After the Indy 500. No, so, I don't, is that true? Yep. I will have yep. to check with Sam John, my son, on that. Really? Okay, yeah, I thought that, that, that Pikes Peak was first. No, anyway. they're really close, they're really okay. close. Pikes Peak started in 1916, though, so it's been around a long time. Right, right. Yeah, but uh, Indy beat it by a few years, but... Uh, yeah, anyway, it's, uh, yeah, so 12 and a half miles, 156 turns, and um, you you all might be shocked to hear what the uh, the record is for that. The record was set a couple of years ago by Volkswagen, who uh, reportedly spent $40 million on their Pikes Peak effort, uh, and that got them up the mountain in less than eight minutes. Wow. Uh, so... Uh, it's in, is in a car it, that was in an EV as well, a, a Volkswagen IDR, which also holds uh, records on the Nurburgring and, you know, Road Atlanta, I believe as well. And all over, they, they kind of had a world tour and set records everywhere and then just retired it. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. And I know the, the top records are all, all EV now, right? Um, more or less, more or less. And that, that was part of the, the motivation for us to convert to EV. It's like, uh, been competing since 2012 and it's like an arms race you know and you just can't you can't keep up um my budget is a little bit below 40 million dollars so <laughs> so yeah we well to... I, I think richard petty said racing is money how fast no speed is money how fast do you want to go yes yes right so so there you go so this is an in in uh car video multicam from chris he's at 11,800 feet 80 miles an hour. He's about halfway up the course at this point.
25 miles an hour. 